It's the early autumn of 2020, and as our world continues to grapple with the pandemic, live music has taken a blow given the fact that it is unsafe to congregate in large groups. The world is at a crossroads as we face multiple crises, and at times we struggle to make sense of it all. So a few of us have come together, abiding by strict safety protocols, to make some much needed music and to reflect on the state of our lives through an avenue that I know best, singing together. We want to take a journey with you through time by performing this choral music, and within our journey we will uncover backstories, discover the greater meaning, and see how this music is a reflection of our times. Just a cappella, ich will, buoyancy, baroque buoyancy. Um, all of the orchestra is playing with you at this moment, including the trombones. Three, and ich will. In this program today, we will be delving into music that was written during times of great adversity. Musicians, composers, and other artists have always created during these moments of struggle, whether personal or collective. And art is often a reaction to its time and can serve as a reflection of ourselves and how we respond to the moment. Disease and pestilence have always given rise to music. So as a quick example, take the renowned composer Johann Sebastian Bach, um, here is a cantata written actually for Lutheran worship service in Leipzig, Germany in 1723. The title is Es ist nicht gesundes in meinem Leibe, which means there is no health in my body. Yeah, good, thank you. Altos, can you emphasize the semiquavers? And sopranos, even though it's a nice big long line, it can't really be truly legato. Yeah? This is talking about, uh, so the, all of the cantata so far is talking about plague and sickness and death. There's not been one movement so far that's about healing. This is sort of a preemptive prayer. You're, you're assuming you'll be healed. Just a year before the premiere of this work, Europe had seen one of the last major outbreaks of the bubonic plague, also called the Black Death. In France, over 100,000 people died, and fears of new cases were surely in the forefront of Bach's mind. After all, he was no stranger to hardship, uh, disease, and death. His parents had died by the time he was 10 years old, and life certainly wasn't easy in 18th century Germany. The rest of the piece has texts such as, The entire world is a hospital, and children in their cradles have been laid low with sickness. A bass aria says, My leprosy, my plague, cannot be healed. Alto. Yes, good. And tenors will just have to endeavor to make the prai very high. It's the, it's the same note as dich. Dich preisen. Good. Just one more time. And this is sort of the grand congregational finale, yeah? So just make it, make it sort of like the last thing we hear before we walk out the door. Three, and... So of course Bach wasn't writing this music thinking that we would be discussing its connection to our world today, but the legacy of this music and Bach's ability to make it come alive is testament to its timelessness and to the composer's genius. So speaking of the Black Death, pandemics and outbreaks were central to medieval life and naturally made its way into the art of the time. Written in the shadow of 50 years of plague, this next piece you'll hear from the 15th century from England is a plea to the Virgin Mary to spare society from illness. It says, hold in check the stars that grant the people the ulcers of a terrible death. O glorious star of the sea, which is the Virgin Mary, save us from plague. Here is Stella Celli, and it is written by John Cook. 
There's another example of plague and music from England, this time in the 16th century reign of Henry VIII. So when the sweating sickness ravaged the court of the Tudor king, he became extremely paranoid and hopped from mansion to country estate to palace, all in an attempt to outrun this pandemic. Justinian, a court diplomat at the time, records that Henry VIII holed himself up in Windsor Castle with only three gentlemen of the court, his favorites, as well as a court musician, Dionoso Memo. I think this is a really important point here. Henry VIII is saying that while running from a deadly outbreak, uh, he felt as though he could not manage quarantine without some music. And I know that, that that music has certainly been indispensable for me during our own modern day self-isolation. This piece has an incredible, if somewhat uncertain story. The piece is dedicated to Lady Carey, who we assume is the famous Mary Boleyn, wife of William Carey, who was one of Henry VIII's favorite courtiers perhaps one of the men quarantined with the king during this time. So Carey died in 1528 of the sweating sickness, the very plague that he undoubtedly assisted Henry VIII in evading. <laughs> Thank you. 
One of the most fascinating and heartbreaking instances of a musician's run-in with a pandemic is that of famed Renaissance composer Palestrina. It's almost as if pandemic sickness was a curse upon his life, and of course he was not alone in his time. Palestrina was a composer and a musician who lived in Italy in the late 16th century. Palestrina is known as a pioneer in music, expounding upon the intricacies of counterpoint, and ultimately being considered the high point of polyphonic music from the Renaissance era. This piece is indicative of his writing style. The words describe God's golden crown, and of course the Latin word for crown is corona, a slightly unsettling circumstance for us in this moment when we're also affected by the rise of the coronavirus.
among Palestrina's many pursuits, he was also busy setting up the family's musical legacy by nurturing the talents found in two of his sons, Rudolfo and Angelo. In the year 1572, Rudolfo tragically fell ill and uh, very unexpectedly died in a pandemic that killed 200 others in the composer's parish. And just a few months later, at the start of 1573, Palestrina's brother, Sila, whom Palestrina was very attached, also died. The outbreak continued to be the center of Palestrina's life as, nevertheless, Palestrina's musical output remained vast. In fact, the period after Rudolfo and Silla's deaths was one of great productivity. The family's musical legacy now rested on Angelo. Angelo had just married into a well-to-do family, um, whose dowry helped Palestrina's family get out from under some financial missteps. So the future of the Palestrina legacy now rested on Angelo in a number of ways. That's what makes the next part of this story just so horrible. Just two years after the first round of family deaths, Angelo dies, leaving his budding family behind as well as his parents and his other siblings who had seen Angelo as their saving grace. As was the law at the time, Angelo's widow was entitled to the dowry from their marriage, of course, by which time Palestrina had already spent to return the family's financial house to order. While Palestrina eventually solved this financial crisis with another arranged marriage for his son Inigno, uh, these losses devastated the composer, and his writing seems to slow down at this time. Here is a piece that Palestrina wrote in 1573. Perhaps the anguish he felt was transferred into this piece, which venerates the cross, a symbol of sacrifice and death, and eventual resurrection. loss is the culmination of Palestrina's life. In 1580, he was dealt a seemingly final blow. 
His wife, Lucrezia, dies along with 10,000 other Romans in an epidemic. This immobilized Palestrina personally and artistically. It was this last blow that caused Palestrina to lose all desire to write music. He decides to abandon music altogether and writes to the Pope to enter the priesthood. Everything just stops. Artwork celebrates 2020's best. Man, there's no other feeling like that. Meet the area's most inventive minds. No one was really doing what I do. And experience their exquisite works. Art cultivates the best in people. Join us for the winners of the Baker Artist Awards. What an amazing group of artists. Well done. With our special's new host, Wendell Patrick. Once, there was a man whose home was either too hot or too cold. So he scheduled a home energy audit and found ways to improve comfort and save money. He made energy saving upgrades and got valuable rebates too. Then he lived comfortably ever after. Start your comfort tale with a home energy audit and get rebates on average of $2,500 for upgrades. Learn more at bgesmartenergy.com. Intimate partner violence is something that crosses all racial and economic lines, affecting millions of adults and children. House of Ruth Maryland aims to end this domestic violence by offering programs for women, children, and the family, as well as the perpetrators. Our vision is that one day, every woman in Maryland will be safe in her own home. If you or someone you know is experiencing intimate partner violence, our confidential hotline is available at 410-889-7884. Artwork celebrates 2020's best. Man, there's no other feeling like that. Meet the area's most inventive minds. No one was really doing what I do. And experience their exquisite works. Art cultivates the best in people. Join us for the winners of the Baker Artist Awards. What an amazing group of artists. Well done. With our special's new host, Wendell Patrick. I'm Lynette Charles, Chief Meteorologist at WMAR2 News. I'd love to forecast this every day. But we do live in Maryland, and the weather's always changing. So we want to make sure you're prepared for anything. That's why we have a team of meteorologists working together to bring you the most accurate forecast, only on WMAR2 News. Be sure to watch Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles weekdays from 4.30 to 7 a.m. on Good Morning Maryland. Once, there was a woman who wanted to save energy and money. So, she scheduled a quick home energy checkup with BGE and had energy saving items installed at no additional cost. Like LEDs and a smart power strip. It only took about an hour and she lived energy efficiently ever after. Schedule your checkup today at bgesmartenergy.com. Baltimore Choral Arts Off the Grid is sponsored by William G. Baker Jr. Memorial Fund, creator of the Baker Artist Portfolios, bakerartist.org. So this is Baroque music with hints of Renaissance um, thrown in. Uh, so, so therefore, I think here at this moment, it should be much more legato. Whoa, now unto us. Just in this moment. Uh, Jim, tenor line. Whoa, I think the B flat is very important, and so you can sort of put one of these on top of it, okay? Um, good, let's just do, uh, can we do 31, right? Whatever you have at bar 31, let's do that. Three and four, yum. Rich and buttery, and Jim. One of the phenomena of the coronavirus pandemic has been the complete desertion of our bustling cities. When the interstate traffic and business district commuters were gone, it was a surreal sight. This piece has words taken from the Book of Lamentations, 
which were writings mourning the exile from Jerusalem. The words of this next piece by Matthew Locke, How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people, has a certain modern poignancy to our time. Locke was a member of the Chapel Royal in London and in 1665 was moved to Oxford to avoid a plague outbreak. One wonders if this exile and the emptying of the London court was on his mind when he wrote this anthem.
artwork celebrates 2020's best. Man, there's no other feeling like that. Meet the area's most inventive minds. No one was really doing what I do. And experience their exquisite works. Art cultivates the best in people. Join us for the winners of the Baker Artist Awards. What an amazing group of artists. Well done. With our special's new host, Wendell Patrick. Once there was a man whose home was either too hot or too cold. So he scheduled a home energy audit and found ways to improve comfort and save money. He made energy saving upgrades and got valuable rebates too. Then he lived comfortably ever after. Start your comfort tale with a home energy audit and get rebates on average of $2,500 for upgrades. Learn more at bgesmartenergy.com. Intimate partner violence is something that crosses all racial and economic lines, affecting millions of adults and children. House of Ruth Maryland aims to end this domestic violence by offering programs for women, children, and the family, as well as the perpetrators. Our vision is that one day, every woman in Maryland will be safe in her own home. If you or someone you know is experiencing intimate partner violence, our confidential hotline is available at 410-889-7884. Artwork celebrates 2020's best. Man, there's no other feeling like that. Meet the area's most inventive minds. No one was really doing what I do. And experience their exquisite works. Art cultivates the best in people. Join us for the winners of the Baker Artist Awards. What an amazing group of artists. Well done. With our special's new host, Wendell Patrick. I'm Lynette Charles, Chief Meteorologist at WMAR2 News. I'd love to forecast this every day. But we do live in Maryland, and the weather's always changing. So we want to make sure you're prepared for anything. That's why we have a team of meteorologists working together to bring you the most accurate forecast, only on WMAR2 News. Be sure to watch Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles weekdays from 4.30 to 7 a.m. on Good Morning Maryland. Once, there was a woman who wanted to save energy and money. So, she scheduled a quick home energy checkup with BGE and had energy saving items installed at no additional cost. Like LEDs and a smart power strip. It only took about an hour and she lived energy efficiently ever after. Schedule your checkup today at bgesmartenergy.com. Baltimore Choral Arts Off the Grid is sponsored by William G. Baker Jr. Memorial Fund, creator of the Baker Artist Portfolios, bakerartist.org. Group singing of one sort or another is prevalent in most world cultures. Singing together strengthens bonds, whether they be ethnicity or shared experience. It comforts, it assists in religious worship, and at times acts as a political vehicle for advocacy and even revolution. For decades, rallying cries were called out in the medium of song in the nation of South Africa. During the struggle against apartheid, hymns were altered to become protest songs to be sung by choirs to speak truth to power. In acts of civil disobedience, jails filled with thousands of non-white South Africans singing, the jails are full, the people will follow. The soundtrack of anti-apartheid movements were provided by singers. This practice continued on into South Africa's next big test, only three decades later when the HIV epidemic brought the nation to the brink. Since South Africa was finally in the hands of the black majority, President Thabo Mbeki was hesitant, even agitated, at the idea of Western pharmaceutical aid and suggested that the AIDS crisis was spread through the conditions of poverty only. So the situation was ripe for protest. Singing stepped in and choirs organized by the Treatment Action Campaign fought HIV stigma at rallies, decried the government in action, and condemned violence against HIV positive people, which was going on all the time. But in addition to providing music for demonstrations, singers and organizations began creating life-saving educational tools. The 
choir called Siptemba, which means we give hope in Zulu, used their positive HIV statuses to bring down stigma, educate, and inspire. Recruitment of other women swelled their numbers from the late 90s into the early 2000s. These people are like more than more than friend, more than being friends, more than being family. I just cannot find an, a, 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 the, the word to describe how the, the, I feel about the choir members. Through our music, we can disseminate this information. That is, that is the, somehow it's the, it's the, the cure towards whatever kind of sickness that you have. These people is jump, are jumping up and down and we, we, we cannot, we cannot able to, to rest and go to bed before we accomplish our mission. That is to give hope to this, our nation and that is we will say our slogan will never die until we find the cure. Respected composer and folk musician Bongani Magetiana was instrumental in this movement. He weaved together South African choral music with jazz, pop styles, and even opera to tell stories and provide the HIV education that was lacking at the time. His group performed this music at schools, clinics, and large events, and we got the incredible chance to speak with him. My name is Bongani Makakiana from Cape Town, South Africa. I wrote the song Usizi during the lockdown in South Africa, a beginning of April 2020. The song title Usizi means the sadness in English. As a COVID-19 started to attack every nation, I could feel its presence around me. As our president announced the lockdown that everything will be closed, everything will be shut down, people won't go to work, won't go to schools, there will be no churches, no movement. People must be indoors. I said to myself, this is really serious. Lockdown started and I was in my house with my kids and family, with my wife and kids. And looking through the window and seeing no one walk in the streets, no cars, running around you know I, I i could feel it that we are really in another situation it was my first experience ever i never experienced that before um and uh, looking to the world well developed countries you know, being attacked by this pandemic, then I said to myself, wow, South Africa, we are a developing country. And if this disease can wipe even the countries that uh, we thought that they have everything, you know, I could see that it means this thing is beyond to a human being. You know, it's only God that can help us, you know. That's when I started to write the first line that said, that says in the song, when it's dark like this, throughout the world, Lord, be our advocate. So the song is being, I was being taken or I was being influenced by the situation. 
seeing the whole world experiencing the same thing at the same time you know um so i wrote the song Osizi, the sadness i thank you now for the first time in performance here is Usizi. <laughs> Artwork celebrates 2020's best. Man, there's no other feeling like that. Meet the area's most inventive minds. No one was really doing what I do. And experience their exquisite works. Art cultivates the best in people. Join us for the winners of the Baker Artist Awards. What an amazing group of artists. Well done. With our special's new host, Wendell Patrick. Once, there was a man whose home was either too hot or too cold. So he scheduled a home energy audit and found ways to improve comfort and save money. He made energy saving upgrades and got valuable rebates too. Then he lived comfortably ever after. Start your comfort tale with a home energy audit and get rebates on average of $2,500 for upgrades. Learn more at bgesmartenergy.com. Intimate partner violence is something that crosses all racial and economic lines, affecting millions of adults and children. House of Ruth, Maryland aims to end this domestic violence by offering programs for women, children, and the family, as well as the perpetrators. Our vision is that one day, every woman in Maryland will be safe in her own home. 
If you or someone you know is experiencing intimate partner violence, our confidential hotline is available at 410-889-7884. Artwork celebrates 2020's best. Man, there's no other feeling like that. Meet the area's most inventive minds. No one was really doing what I do. And experience their exquisite works. Art cultivates the best in people. Join us for the winners of the Baker Artist Awards. What an amazing group of artists. Well done. With our special's new host, Wendell Patrick. Once, there was a woman who wanted to save energy and money. So, she scheduled a quick home energy checkup with BGE and had energy saving items installed at no additional cost like LEDs and a smart power strip. It only took about an hour, and she lived energy efficiently ever after. Schedule your checkup today at bgesmartenergy.com. Baltimore Coral Arts Off the Grid is sponsored by William G. Baker Jr. Memorial Fund, creator of the Baker Artist Portfolios, bakerartist.org. This journey through music and time shows the robust response artists have had to times of adversity. You know, I'm always amazed at music's ability to connect us to the past and clarify our present circumstances as well. Not only that, but even music that is born from heartache and difficulty can illuminate the path forward into a better future. So what is that future? After a period of uncertainty, a year of events that fill us with fear and insecurity of all types, how does our society and our artistic reactions to society move forward? Well, perhaps it can go forward because of the hope we can muster up by seeing our frontline workers in action, or hearing stories of neighbors helping each other, or disparate groups of people coming together in forgiveness and reconciliation. While we cannot all meet together in person yet, most of the choir have come together virtually to celebrate the hope of a better day. So from the safety of our homes, we now present to you a song by Dolly Parton herself called The Light of a Clear Blue Morning. It's been a long, dark night And I've been waiting for the morning It's been a long, hard fight But I see a brand new
Creator.